Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Today I'm working on um, some elemental armors. Four different armors today. I'm gonna do, there's already, um, let's see, there's the Shadrax tier. Looks like I don't have it for this world seed here. But I'm gonna do four new armors. So there's gonna be the ice armor, the lightning armor. What's up, Raga Bunny? Uh, the fear armor. So yeah, doing armors. Armors, armors, armors. I'm going to start by working on... Let's get... Uh, well, let's set, set it so the player has all these items. I think I already have all these items created. Let's make sure that there are items already for them. Fire armor. Yeah, there's already items. Cool. No need to recompile. Ah, oh, nice. I already have all these. Okay, cool. So I'm going to set them all up. And I'm going to name all these. Give them some pixel art. What's up, Ogre Shud? Welcome. Well, it's kind of cold today. It's like a cold, rainy day. Which is great. California needs rain like crazy. We need all the rain we can get. And then more. Alright, so here's Shadrax tier. What is up with this one? This pixel art on this bottom row really is crazy. It's like repeating the top pixel. Weird. I gotta fix that. Okay, anyways, these four things, I'm gonna draw some pixel art for these, give them some different descriptions and stuff. Yeah, I already replied to you on that. Yeah, I replied to you on that, Rocket Bunny. Um, you need to check out the main.cpp file that comes with Entity Foo. You need to design your own components. They, it, Entity Foo doesn't just work out of the out of the box. You have to go design some uh, components around it. So check out main.cpp. There's an example. Uh, the example is a health component. You know, it shows you how you would design something like a health component. You throw and so you needed to design your own like health component, your own render component, your own everything. <clears throat> but yeah, main.cpp already shows you how to do that. If I were you, a simple way to do it would just be to co to create a, a small project and throw in main.cpp um, and and the entity foo.cpp and h, and that should give you a start right there. Okay, let's get some text descriptions. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so ice armor, this is gonna be Murr's locket, no, Sand's locket. Sand is an NPC that I will eventually create. I haven't got, that's how you spell locket, right? Why can't I spell locket? That's right, yeah. Why did I think it's not spelled that way? Sands Locket protects the wearer from ambient cold damage. Some cold damage. From a portion of ice damage, something like that. Okay, so the lightning armor is going to be the circuit breaker. <laughs> yeah. Nice. What are you what are you what are your insights from watching the first twenty days?
partially protects? I'm trying to think of a way to describe this. It's like, it doesn't completely protect you from ice damage or lightning damage or acid or fear, but it partially protects you, so... I'm just going to put it this way. Protects the wearer from ice damage. You get to see more of the back end? Yeah, there was a lot more back end stuff back then because that's what it's like when you first develop a game. You got to develop all that back end stuff that nobody ever sees later. Well, yeah, when the game's finished, nobody ever sees it. Nobody ever sees it, but you feel it. People feel it. Okay, I guess you, Shadrach's Tear is something you could consider when you're wearing it. Sands Log, it's the same thing, but a Circuit Breaker. Alright, so the Acid Armor is Playa Dust! Ha ha ha! Fear armor is enlightenment. Provide some protection. There we go. Provide some protection from. That's a good way to word it. Provide some protection from. Yay! Provide some protection from acidic damage. There we go. Good. Okay, now we got all these um, text descriptions done. Now let's go draw draw these new items. Boop a doop a doop boop a doop a doop. Alex Pita, what's up, man? Bellazio, what's up, man? How you doing? What you been doing? What's up? Is a system a composition of components? No. No, 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 it's not. A system is this code that works with a composition of components. An entity, in an entity component system, an entity is a composition of components. So you, you almost had it right there. So once again, an entity is a composition of components, which is typically represented by a single integer, which represents that entity which is then a composition of components, right? That are basically all linked together by that one integer representing the entity. And then a system is some code that you write that works with those components and entities, which are basically just components. Does that make sense? Honestly, it's probably best if you write a write a few simple games before you get into working with entity component systems. They're a bit on the intermediate to advanced side of game development. Yeah, man. You're busy with the shop? Yeah? And house? Nice. You following the stream? Sweet, man. Yeah, thank you. It's getting better and better every day. I'm really excited for it. Progress is going really amazingly with Songbringer. The game's getting really mature.
Yeah. How have you been, Alex Peta? What's been? Go how's the how's the shop going? So this is Sand's locket. Let me get uh, some art inspiration here for a locket. Kind of cool. All's going finally. It's working well. Awesome. Right on. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right, all right. I like this one or that one. This seems kind of powerful. I like this one. Or wait, 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 wait. These are some good ones too. Ooh, that's cool. Ah. Yeah, this one's coolest. Coolest of all! So, I'm making four new items today. These are four elemental armors. Yeah, this is pretty steampunk, right? I liked it. I liked all those. Those are all really cool. Look how jumbly all these pixels look. It doesn't even look anything like a locket anymore. <laughs> Why did I even look this up? These might be good colors to use, but maybe I'll just start, I'll use these colors. Like the flask, this is kind of a cool color. What's up, T? How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream.
How's it going today? Starting to look like a baseball. Yeah, there you go. That's a good idea. Yeah. Raga bunny. Yeah, I would I would start off with something really simple. Start with a really, really simple idea. And then and then and then move into using entity foo and entity component systems. Teak, an idea for your next game slowly materializes. Yes. It's coming to life. Materializing. This doesn't even look like a locket. <sighs> yeah, it's slowly getting together. Cool. Yeah, Entity Foo is the entity component system I wrote for this game. And then um, I put it on GitHub. It's a C entity component system. Maybe something like this actually would do well at pixel art levels. That's a little bit closer, I was thinking. Something like this, without these white pixels. Now I'm just cleaning up these pixels a little bit. This look nicer.
Uh huh. A clever name for some kind of modding library. Oh yeah. There's really no there's no modding libraries or anything like that. But there but Songbringer will be totally moddable. Um, everything in the game is all uh, all data driven and stuff. Like, uh, here's the story, for example. You can play with the whole story. You can play with the world, every one of the dungeons. You can play with all the entities and all that, all the data. You can even open up all the AI. All the AI is uh, data-driven. Like, here's the fire boss, for example. You know, you can even play with all the behaviors of the AI, everything. So you'll totally be able to mod Songbringer. Um, eventually, I'll make some kind of documentation for all this. But the first most important thing is to finish the game, you know, and make it good. And then I'll and then I'll make a cool doc like a library or like some kind of like documentation for how to mod. What's up, Clock? Welcome to today's stream. I'm working on uh, four new pieces of armor. I'm wondering what would happen if I rotated this a little. Just a little bit. That's that's all right. How's it going? It's really going really good. Yeah, they don't get fully baked into the release game or anything. So in the release game, it looks like this. Like you, the folder. Hi, heck, I'll even open up the Steam folder. Where's that at? I think I got a link to it here in Songbringer. Steam app. Here we go. This is the Steam. This is the actual Steam folder, right? So you got like a Mac, Linux and windows specific executable files but then you and then the assets folder this is what i'm talking about in the assets folder you got all the textures so if you wanted to like go re-export your own textures it's all there it's all in the clear there's no passwords or any kind of like compression or encryption or anything sound files same thing you can change all the sound files and then the data files are all what i was just talking about so everything is all data files in the clear there's no encryption, no, there's not, it's not even compiled into like one other file, so you'd have to uncompile it or whatever. The only thing that will be encrypted eventually is the saves file. So your, your saves file is where like all your save game data is stored. Eventually this will be like some sort of simple encryption. It won't be too bad. So you will be able to hack it if you want to hack it. But um, yeah, that's the only thing that will, I just won't want people to cheat too easily. I want it to be somewhat of a challenge to cheat. <clears throat> How's, yeah, it's going really good. How? What about a mod loader? You load scripts that overwrite the original scripts from the mods folder. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't you wouldn't just want to go in that folder and edit the files yourself. You replace J with the fonts. <laughs> That's one thing you could do. Oh, because you have to save the original files? Well, yeah. You just go save the files and then edit them. I don't know. I don't really want to create stuff that uh, is difficult. Like, that is like, that just adds a layer of complexity, I guess. I want to keep it simple. Now this lock is starting to look good.
replace the end boss with Donald Trump. Uh, uh, that would be pretty funny. Have you guys seen the? Have you guys seen the? Uh, the um, the art of the deal. It was on Netflix. It's like this movie that um, that uh, what's his name? Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is in it. He attacks throwing his hair at you. <laughs> that would be a funny... Uh, I bet you somebody... Some game developer out there is probably already making a game like that. What's up, Salad Dogs? How you doing today, man? I'm drawing some new armors here. This is the locket. This is a um, Murr's locket. Or sand lo Sand's locket. This protects you from ice damage. Alright, this should be set up. We should, uh... I'll draw all these first before I go and try and set them all up. Okay, so we got a locket. Um, circuit Breaker. Let's draw a Circuit Breaker. Yeah, they did. They made a movie out of the art of the deal. Oh, so yeah, I knew there were a ton of Trump games. Yeah. I knew it. There had to be somebody out there that's just had to, like, bite at the chance to, to make a, a fun game about that. Okay, Circuit Breaker. Circuit Breaker is protects you from lightning damage or electricity damage. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I like these little colored ones. This one's, this one's big. It's a hundred amps. Wow. In the early modding versions, you had to decompile the game and modify the original files. Today, you just have to put the mods in a folder and they get loaded. Yeah, that's kind of how simple Songbringer is. You just put the files in, or just edit the files themselves. This one's kind of neat. This one could be pretty easily visual for pixel art. These could do too, but they're too rectangular. Let's go with this one. I'm using this as using these reference images just to like kickstart my brain into drawing things in pixel art. Oh, they fam they use an obfuscator. Yeah, I'm trying to do the opposite. I want things to be as easy as possible for people to mod or cheat. Well, not as easy as possible to cheat, but like, you know, to change the game, change the game a little bit. That's why I wrote this as a data driven game, but also so I wouldn't have to write so much code. That's pretty. That's a, that's a big part of it. Read the comments in the code. What do you mean? What language do they write their game in if they, if you can read the comments in a decompiled code? You just you just made a circuit breaker image just now? <laughs> nice one. Nice one. <laughs> yeah, clock. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Yeah. Oh, because he wrote it in Java. Really? Java compiles your comments? That's crazy. It's crazy talk. Really? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my graphics tab would just stop working. Not again. 
Come on, Graphic Seven, come back to me. I was really enjoying our our session here and all of our sessions we've had in the last six months with no issue. Come on, Graphic Seven, work again. You know you want to. It's not that hard. It's just as easy as one, two, three. Come on, work. Work, pen. Graphics tablet pen. It's so easy. You love to remember all the remember all the days you were working? Wow, it really does? I never knew Java did that. And then Mojang amusingly hired the guy who wrote the D obfuscator that made Minecraft modding possible. Ah, it works again. Yes, yes, we're back in business. All right, something, something intermittent usage of the, oh well. Let's go. That might be a whole pixel we get saved right there. Crop that. Yeah, my tablet's been dying for the last few years. <laughs> this keeps on, keeps on going somehow. Single input, multiple data. What is that? Beep, boop, 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 boop. Does that look anything like a circuit breaker? No, but we're going to make it look like a circuit breaker. I promise you. Do, 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 do. 12, let's go maybe less. Eight, no, too few. Ten, that's pretty good. Let's you operate on multiple registers in a single assembly call. Oh, really? Uh, what's that, what's this though? So how would you, how do you use, How do you use that in C++ or is that, that just simply something that the compiler does basically for you? Oh yeah, what's up, what's this up? Yeah, it makes things like matrix multiplication super fast. I bet it would. If you can load multiple registers, just brr, 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 bam. Uh-huh. Uh. -huh. uh. <laughs> yeah, they're jit. Oh, SSE is streaming simmed extensions. I never knew that. Wow. Oh. Algorithm examples. Show me some algorithm examples. First, you're showing matrices right away. Oh, so yeah, you just write your code kind of... It's just guidelines for writing C++ code that will basically be compiled to use SSE or SIMD. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's just guidelines how to write your code. Wow, that is really cool how it how it does compile a lot cleaner if you do if you write your code right. Huh. Uh huh. Is it possible to initiate a two dimensional interray like this? 
Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Hundred amps circuit breaker. Blamo. So it's like a little switch. It gets complicated quick. Mm, mm hmm. Yeah, I think the one. Um, what's the one that Coco's Two DX uses? Uh, Kazmath. Kazmath. Oh yeah, they got some benchmarks on Kazmath here. <laughs> Sweet. These are some really nice benchmarks right here. Love it. Oh well. <laughs> I did. I stopped it already. <laughs> Why? I didn't want to see any benchmarks like in my web browser. I just wanted to see some actual benchmarks from some, you know, somebody's code that ran in either C plus plus or C or something. You know. Stopping already. Stop it already. Are they got some C sharp stuff? Yep, that's cool. Yep. Well, cool. Yep is C, C++, C Sharp, Java, and Fortran. Why did they have to use Fortran? Do people use Fortran that much these days? What do people use Fortran for these days? Like, really? Am I using, yes, I mean using the Cocos 2DX uh, engine. Yep. On top of Cocos 2DX, I've written 72,000 lines of code for Songbreaker though. As I think, almost 72. Oh yeah, just above 72,000 lines so far. Uh, like things inside Songbreaker that I'm, I've written and shared are Entity Foo, that's an Entity Component System, and Valtry. I shared that on GitHub too. And I also shared a thing that I use to pre-compile Coco Studio X called Rapid Game. So, yeah, 
it's it's a lot of code, but I've shared some of the components of it on GitHub. Oh, it's for maintenance of old server software, really? Oh, in scientific computing. Oh. Hmm. Okay, okay, I got it. I see the use, I see the value. We can keep Fortran around. That's all right. Better than rewriting all of our software, huh? Does that kind of look like a circuit breaker? Sort of. Sort of does. I don't know. We're just going to call that a circuit breaker for now. <laughs> Next up, we got the Playa Dust. This is going to be a little sack of black dust. Oh, maybe, maybe a clear plastic sack. Some of the Fortran constructs compiled to really cache friendly code. Mmm. Yeah. C++'s history and backwards compatibility. The thing about C++, I wish, I wish they would like change. I wish one of the newer, newer drafts of C++ would do away with headers and the slow compilation. You know, if we could just get rid of headers and sort of rethink the whole header concept, I think we could really speed up compile times of C++ and or C, you know. If C got rid of headers, I would I would jump on using it. Or if Jai comes out one of these days. Can't wait for that. Poison armor. Well, poison armor. Let's okay. Mm, should we do poison armor next or fear armor next? I'm thinking. Let's do poison armor. Poison armor, acid armor is the is a sack of playa dust. Yeah, headers are so annoying. They totally are, right? There are modules. There are modules, but do they work? Do they actually work? Xcode doesn't seem to make them work. I tried enabling modules, and it does not do anything. At least for C++. I'm sure it does work for Objective C and like and uh, and Swift or whatever. But they haven't really gotten. I don't think they've gotten on the balls with. Yeah, yeah. They nope. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't write you back yet. They only anticipate their advertising mails. Damn. Damn, man. Oh, oh. Um, Teak. Which one did you do? Uh, Humble Bundle has two application forms. One of them is for um, when you apply for them to sell your game via a widget, and one of them is for them to for them to sell your game on the Humble Store. They're probably going to ignore you for selling your game on the Humble Store because you you're a smaller developer. You know what I mean. So and you you don't have any like commercial backing yet you know no, not a lot of commercial support but their widget their widget they'll instant they should instantly say yes and send you the widget code and boom and you can start selling your game via their widget that's probably the best way to get your foot in the door with humble yeah 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 okay so you didn't do the widget one okay so that's probably why you haven't got a reply yet is because for their humble store they're really looking for games that sell already you know that are already selling so if you do the widget, I think it'd be a good way to to get started with them. Yeah, yeah, it is. The, yeah, you're right, member seven. It totally is. Modules are excellent. If if we could get modules actually working, that would be an excellent way to get rid of headers. It's just, I know Clang Clang is on the path to doing that. It's just that, like Xcode hasn't done it or. I don't know, maybe there's a way to use it with GCC or something. I don't know how it all works yet. Yeah. Let's 
Swift has no pointers? I haven't even ever, ever looked at Swift code. Oh, so they say that they're going to reply if they do not accept. Well, yeah, uh, they say. They do say, right? I'm thinking a, a single plastic baggie full of playa dust. <laughs> this is going to be the best item. Ah! <laughs> Give me pointers and the gun to shoot myself in the foot. Uh. I know, it would be, right? It would be so much better if they were just replied. But I will tell you, it was the same case for me, Teak. Remember I told you they didn't reply forever for Humble Store? And my my game had already been on Kickstarter and succeeded, you know? Um, so don't take it personal. You know, it's not like they, they don't, they're bad. They're kind of bad at replying. I think I told you that right away. So, and remember I told you how, like, I had to, like, finally get a contact there? And finally, once I had this one contact at Humble Bundle, like I'm like, okay, I can I can email this guy and he will actually reply. Um, so that's kind of how it is. So I think we I think if you did the widget, it might help, because then you're gonna have somebody you can contact at at Humble, and you're like, hey, uh, I want to edit my widget real quick. Can you help me edit my widget or whatever? And then you have a contact, and then you can be like, hey, by the way, I'd like to put my game on the Humble Store. And then they and that'll really help you fast track their whole process. I don't know what it is, but they're just like they're like kind of bad at replying to emails. Like maybe this one I could adapt well or that. I don't know. You applied for GOG? Nice. Yeah, GOG, cool. GOG's a good one. I haven't applied to GOG yet, but I've heard good things about GOG. Are static functions bad? No, not at all. Static functions and even static variables are not bad per se. It's they can be used badly. They can they can static especially static variables can be abused quite easily, but they have an excellent usage. I use static variables almost all the time to prevent myself from having to put variables in headers. So as long as you know what you're doing, you can really use statics the right way. <laughs> My, it's, yep. <laughs> yeah, how they are. Yeah, so far, um, so far, Humble's been, you know, good for sales for me. But it did, like I was saying, it, it was some work and some effort to try and get them to like finally accept my game. But um, I've heard Gog's good. I scratch my nose. <laughs> Are you using a bag of water for a water texture? Yeah, <laughs> no. This is gonna be a bag of playa dust. In fact, I wonder if somebody even has, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna type in the most random thing. Plastic bag of playa dust. 
No, not really. But it does have lots of playa pictures. <laughs> Caught it a white out. Oh, I remember this one. Nope, there's no like just picture of a plastic bag applied us. Somebody should, somebody, damn it, somebody needs to make one. Something about like that. What's playa dust? It's this dust in um, this. It's all the dust at Burning Man. So Burning Man is this festival I like to go to, and it looks like this basically. This is what the Burning Man playa desert or whatever it looks like. It's out here in Nevada in the United States and the dust is this alkaline substance it's really really alkaline substance that is kinda of corrosive and stuff but it protects it's like alkaline so that's kinda of the thing is it protects you from acid or whatever acidic things is that, is that right? Am I chemist, am I, is my chemistry right there that alkaline protects you from acid? Yeah, that Casey guy, he makes three D fines out of it. Global variable, local persists, and internal. Oh, that's cool. Images of bag drugs. Yeah, I'll try that next. I got an idea here. I think this might work. I'm just going to make this image pixel art really quick and then uh, adjust it a little bit. If this doesn't work, I'll try that. Try hue saturating this a little so it looks more like playa dust. So it's in certain contexts, huh? Baking soda, uh huh. So it's just like pale yellowish white color almost. <laughs> I don't know if this is working very well. I might just put it in a little like leather sack type thing.
it's like really white almost. This is close, but I don't think this looks anything like what I was imagining. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really hard thing to draw in pixel art, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this would work. I guess it kind of does. If I zoom out, it does kind of look like almost like a plastic sack. Oh, SCU builds? There you go. That's a win way to not have headers slow things down too much. This might work. If I remember right, this image here had a yeah, like a little red line on the top, and then sort of like another line there. Yeah, let's clean this up, and then oh, I can add some like shininess to the edges. I already guys this kind of have some shininess here. CPBCon 2016? Um, so you guys are talking about... Um, what's his game he's making? Handmade Hero? Is that the one, right? Yeah, it's cool. How, so what, how's that game coming? Okay, that's, <laughs> you know what? It's a funny item anyways, Hi Playa Dust. Cool, I'm just gonna leave it like that. It almost looks like a plastic sack full of dust. Maybe I'll make it a little wider actually. It makes boosting your programming productivity. He has he has a lot of good thoughts. He's a very he's a very intelligent game developer. Yeah, I really like his thoughts on on languages and everything in Jai. I really can't wait for Jai. You know, some people have certain you know his his attitude can be you know it's just what it is how he responds and treats people and things like that, but. Seems like a cool guy in general, I guess. 
Yeah, it's ego. Yeah, it's ego. Why not just make a pile of dust? <laughs> that's, that's basically what this is. But I want it to be able to something that you can get and hold and like, you know, be transferred from your hands into their hands or their hands into your hands. You know, you get this from somebody or something or somewhere. All right, good enough, good enough. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is enlightenment. How am I going to represent enlightenment? Well, it's kind of a Sarira. Maybe I'll just use the Sarira image, actually. Or maybe the Sarira, yeah, I'll take the Sarira image and then make it a little, make it like a different color. Like you get the Sarira, because you're going to eventually take all the Sarira you collect and combine them into, to make the fear armor, which is enlightenment. So I think it would be good to use this image and just change the hue a little bit. You can split a pile of dust better than a bag of dust. <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. All right, so maybe it's like, um, Huh. What hue? What hue? Well, so it protects you from fear, right? So maybe it's black itself. Or maybe it's not black. Maybe it's white. It might just be white. Oh, yeah. And then it would kind of symbolize the pearl. That's a good idea, I guess. White. You haven't checked it out in a while. Comes Coming along nicely. Uh-huh. Nice. Enemies. Oh, it's got proc gen? Oh. Oh, I haven't really... So what's the... Let me check this out real quick. The concept between hand... What is what is this game, actually? Handmade Hero. Like, what, is, what kind of game is it? Oh, yeah. I remember seeing this image here. Oh, does it look like this? So it's kind of like a... Is it an RPG? Let's see some screenshots. Show me some screenshots. There's like no link to screenshots or media or anything. Oh, cool. So yeah, it's like an action RPG then? That would be sweet. I love action RPGs. Here, let's go here. Maybe there's something on, on Twitch or Twitter. No, wait, what? What? I thought I clicked Twitter. There's no Twitter. Oh, oh, okay. Not much to show yet. Ah, I see. Cool guy? Nice. Nice. I like the cool guys. Yep, I think a good idea to, is just to leave the hue alone and play with the brightness and the saturation so it turns like white almost.
there we go about like that maybe in opacity about 80 there we go cool we got these items drawn let's put these in bam bada bada bam But he's blunt, yeah. Nice, he's blunt. Yeah, it's your favorite part, back end stuff. I like back end stuff too. But you know, now that Songbringer is kind of way past the back end stuff, I'm really enjoying this front end stuff too. Kind of enjoying both, gotta admit. The back end, though, I, I know what you mean. The back end is so fun to create the systems and create them all well. That's why I'm really, really glad I created an entity component system to start this game. Like, that got me so... God, I will never write a game again without an entity component system. If I had done... If I had do one more thing better for Songbringer, I would have made it all data-driven to start with. Like, making things data-driven is just... It's the shit, man. It'll save you so much time. And then also a great suggestion from one of my live streams. Somebody said, hey, you should look into behavior trees. So I made a behavior tree system, and that also is so valuable. So entity component system, behavior trees, and data-driven. Those three things have, in the back end have really, really made developing this game much more rapid and much less code than I would have written, which is always awesome. Less code equals equals better. Uh-huh. He wants more people to learn to do things from the ground up. Nice. That's cool. Your favorite thing is a shipped game. Yeah. Me too. Cool. Runtime compiled C++. Oh, that's, that is the one thing that kind of sucks about behavior trees is debugging your behavior tree. But if you do a runtime, you, what is it called? Where you can compile your own data back into code or whatever, and then you can kind of debug it a little easier. That's the one thing that's kind of hard. To, you can, it's hard to actually step through code of my behavior tree, at least my behavior tree design. I sh if there's a better way to debug, that would be really a lot better. Okay, so we got Shadrach's tier, that's the fire armor. Sands Locket protects the wear from ice damage. Circuit Breaker provides some protection from lightning damage. Playa Dust <laughs> provides some protection from acidic damage. And Enlightenment. This doesn't look anything like Enlightenment. This is one I definitely want to redraw. Okay, so the lock gets a little too bright. Enlightenment looks too muddy. And Playa Dust looks all right, actually. The Circuit Breaker, I want to check. I want to play with the pixels a little bit. Okay, yeah, so it compiles them and runs the new code. Ah. Uh... You built most of the back end yesterday. I'm today I'm finishing back end, hoping finishing the main game idea. Nice, man. Right on. Right on, man. This one's a little too bright. Let's go a little less brightness. That's not working. I'll do brightness and contrast. Oops, wait, I want more contrast, less brightness. No, actually the contrast looked all right. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this little pixel here looked weird. Runtime, compiled, C++. Mm-hmm. 
scripting, foundation of rapid AI. Hell yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. So you change the code while the game is running. That's rad. Nice. That's really awesome. Yeah, the dust more shine. That's a good thought. That's a good thought. I'll try that. So we got some shine here. Yeah, we can make, let's try to pronounce, yeah, I'll pronounce this red a little bit better. And I can make these bits here a little brighter to give it a little bit more shine. Hmm. Okay, so most of your game is a DLL basically. So the DLL gets reloaded then? Oh yeah, totally a DLL could, right? But it, I guess that only right I almost only only works for uh Windows, right? Dinner's arrived. Alright, Ogre should. Thanks for stopping by, man. That's a, that's pretty bright, 20. Let's try that about 10 at first. Okay, so this this Sarira looked way too, way too muddy. I mean, way too flat, boring. I don't know, I might have to start over with this. Let's try that. How can you make a variable and its name depends on another variable? What it what are you trying to do? What what is it that you're trying to accomplish here? Oh yeah, that, that plastic does look a little more shiny now, but I think the red could be even more pronounced. Uh, the circuit breaker looks okay. I think I'm gonna take away a pixel or two there still. But yeah, I'm gonna totally redo this enlightenment. It's, I, think it's, I think I'm just gonna use the same image as the Serira, or maybe make the Serira a deeper color instead of whiter. What's up, Van Zandt? 
Hell yeah, I've been killing bugs like a boss, dude. Like yesterday I got, how many bugs did I fix yesterday? I think Command 7's my, yeah, there we go. I've got all these like shortcut links. Because I'm using hammer spoons, pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I started off this week with a um, hundred and something bugs. And now I'm down to 71. So I got about 30 bugs fixed so far, just in the last like two or three days. But yeah, really, really made a lot of progress this week. I mean, still there's 71 bugs left on my current urgent now slash list. But it's, it's, it's a pretty good progress. You caught a bug that managed to crash the debugger? Nice. So you're looping through an error to figure out where everything goes, and I'm storing all of the walls in array, and I want each wall to have a different name. Oh, well, Rocket Bunny, if you just want to know what, if you'd want to know, right? I'm imagining you have an array of walls, like wall variables or whatever. Why don't you make your wall, each wall, make it a struct? So each wall is a struct. It has maybe like an integer ID. It also has a string name. And then when you're debugging and you're going through your walls, you just look into that struct and you can see, oh, there's the name of that wall right there. See what I'm saying? So you're attaching a name variable also to like an integer variable or whatever, representing your, your tile or your block or whatever. Am I working on this game full time? Hell yes, I am. No, I do not have a day job. I started this game with no job, no income, and my whole purpose was to try and do a Kickstarter. <laughs> What's up, Zilton? Nice potato. <laughs> it kind of does look like a potato. But yeah, and then, so my whole point was, okay, I'm going to do a Kickstarter, and if the Kickstarter fails, I'll go get a job. I really didn't want to go get a job, and thankfully, the Kickstarter succeeded. So yeah, the Kickstarter is what like funded the initial development here for Songbringer, and then since then, I've been doing alpha funding with... You know, selling the game on Humble Bundle and on my own website and everything like that. So, yep, it's a, it's a full time thing. I, I do Songbringer seven days a week, at least eight hours a day. This is this represents thousands and thousands of man hours so far gone into Songbringer. So, uh, eventually the game will be finished, and I will be so excited to put it out and share it with y'all. And right now, I'm already sharing it with you, a lot of y'all. On the beta. How you been, Zilton? What's up? You're refracting the rendering code to prepare for implementing sprite batching. Oh, yeah. GL buffer data. Uh, it did. That's crazy. <laughs> you hope I make bank. Thanks, man. I hope I make bank, too. Uh, if I make bank, I can definitely pay off some credit card debt that I... <laughs> that I, uh, I incurred from writing my last video game. I do not recommend doing that ever. I don't remember, recommend ever using your own funds or no, I never recommend using other people's funds um, that I mean that you have to pay back like credit cards. Don't pay, don't, don't use your credit card to make a video game. That's all I'm saying. Cause you're, you're, you, you have a very high chance of your game not making anything, especially if you're at the point where you're using your credit card. So, anyways, do a Kickstarter. That's all I recommend. Recommend doing a Kickstarter. You've been, you're going to do a Halloween cosplay? Sweet, man. It's, it's all funds and games until someone gets a credit card bill. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, oh man, it's sad for me. Because I, uh, I wrote all about it on Gama Sutra. I have a whole article about how to, how to prove that your game is worth your time before wasting all your money and time on your video game, basically. It's a it's a hard lesson to learn in life. It was a very hard lesson for me to learn, but probably one of the most important lessons I've ever learned in game development was how to make my game prove that it deserved my time, not that I deserved its time.
And everything I learned from that project is what made me uh, do Songbringer the way I'm doing it. So, yeah, I, re I learned from my lessons. I learned my lessons. And here I am. Here we are. Here we all are. I could just use this same, exact same image because this is kind of the point, right? You take these five or four or five Serira, combine them into Enlightenment. You're going as Bro Strider? How many hours do you average a day on your game? Like I was saying, at least eight. Um, I defi There's definitely a good amount of days per week that I put in probably 12 hours a day. Uh, some days I do a little bit less, like maybe on a Sunday I'll only work six hours on the game. But that's kind of my strategy of how how do I get as much done that a small team would? I just work a lot, and I do I try and do I try and do things that make game development a lot more rapid. Like uh, for example, using an entity component system that makes you a lot faster, I think, in game development and learning techniques to make your art faster and your programming faster and things like that. What about something like this for enlightenment? Oh, I'm interested in seeing Mutinous. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's Galaxy Orb. It's pretty neat. I like it. Thank you, Van Zandt. Thank you. Well, if you look back at all the videos and make it song where you can see just it's a, it's a iterative process. My process for polish is just iterate, you know, iterate, iterate, make it a little bit better, a little bit better. If you look at the day one of Songbringer, it was not very pretty. So what if we went with the purple look like that? Because I think there's... Well, this blink orb is kind of purple. This is kind of neat. Oh, maybe I'll use this. I don't think I ever used this image. It's kind of cool. Or did I? No, this is the this is the lightning orb. Never mind. That's the lightning orb. You're, you're at day 61 at one and a half speed. Are you really watching them fast? That's cool. How do you do that? How do you make them watch faster? I would definitely do that. If I were, if I were trying to watch all these videos, I would do everything I can to make them faster. Because there's literally like hours each one. I'm just talking and making art really slow today. This is slow. Ooh, I got it, I got it. I'm gonna make two of these layers. You can, I didn't know you could do that. You could, can you do that for any YouTube video? And you can set it slower? Oh my God, I never knew that. How do you do a for each loop in C++? Uh, you do it like this. If you're using C++11. If you're not using C++11 or, or greater, there's no such thing as a for each loop. But if you have like a vector or whatever, you have a vector of integers or whatever. This is how you do a for each loop. You just do for auto ref whatever object in L. And then you would use the object like that. If O equals one. Da, 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 da. See what I mean? That's how you do it, Rocket Bunny. This is essentially the for each loop. It's called a for. Uh, what's it called? C11 for. 
What's this called? Does anybody know what this is actually technically called? Week six of college, still don't know how to code. You know how to model though? That's great. <laughs> you're such a you're a proponent of descriptive names. This is really descriptive. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna go with a few different hues here to try and make this a little more interesting. We'll go with a, like a purpley hue. I could have just done with purple to start with. There we go. I'm going to put this one on top. Oh man, I'm so slow at making art today. Gabriel Modog, uh, what framework are you using to programming? Do you mean game engine? I'm using a game engine called Cocos 2DX. What? Yep. I don't know. I don't know. This is a little more colorful. If I just make it a little transparent, it'll look kind of pearly. Let's we'll see what that looks like. I'm kind of tired of drawing. I want to. I want to get to the code part here. Oh shit! Where did I put that? Oh, uh, I don't think that actually rendered. Here we go. All users license HUD HUD. Cool. Override all that. Run the game, man. Run it. Cool, I gotta get to the programming part. I'm too slow in the art today. Yeah, I'm putting the graphics out of the way. Can't take it anymore.
All right, we got Shadrach's tier. That looks pretty good. The locket still looks pretty good. Maybe the it could have a little. <laughs> I'm already thinking what I could do to improve this. Yeah, this is all pretty good. This is good enough. Enlightenment. Yeah, that actually looks a lot better with some color to it. Some purple and some yellow. We got the plant play dust. I love that. Yes. All right. We're looking good. We're looking good. I'm gonna check this in. We got some good good edits so far. Now I'm gonna work on a little bit of code before the stream is over today. I think we added a few items here. No, wait, no, I already had those. I already had those in. Yes, yeah, so we got Sans Locket. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking too. I was just saying like, oh, I'm not gonna do any more art, but I really wanted to add a little shine. So let's do that. I wanna do a little few, a few little white pixels really quick. Uh, ice armor. So take this hue quickly, swiftly, as swift as possible. Almost white. This should make it look more metallic. Maybe a few like weird random ones. There we go. God oh, damn it, I did the same thing. Export. It's a locket, not a potato. I know it's hard to. It's kind of sometimes it's hard to get across things in, in pixel art. Foisty. Hey, it's still compiling the, the sprite sheet. <laughs> Still looks like a nice potato. You need that potato? Is it still running? What's going on? Oh, oh. It's like I can't run like this. Hmm. Ah. I still want to adjust it. Ba do do. So the point is for this to be so much brighter that it actually almost shines. Let's see if that helps. Now it's a nicely baked potato, <laughs> yeah. That's a little better. Not a lot better, but a little better. It's still, it's irrelevant, irrelevant. I must continue on, I must continue with the code now. <clears throat> okay, so I gave 
four new descriptions and named some items here. Created the art for them. Now, now we can place start placing these items in the world and also make sure that their effects work. So when you get the fire armor, it gives you this uh, resistance to fire. I want to make sure the other armors have that as well. Oh yeah, it, I did do all these already. Okay, so if you have fire armor, it gives you health fire resist. Ice armor gives you ice resist. Same thing with lightning, poison, and fear. All of these have their, they're implemented already. So as long as you possess one of these items, you're gonna have this, this health resistance flag to that particular element. Let's make sure that this is actually working though, like when you, um... Health fire resist, does that actually work? Does fear resist mean you can't be killed? No, it just means you can't be panicked. Panic makes you run around in like random directions. You're holding the up arrow and it randomly does like left arrow, right arrow, down arrow. You're like, ah! It really is kind of hard because you don't, you just can't move at that point or else you just kind of just end up running around in a circle. Oh, these are the constant damages. That's not what I'm talking about. So something, oh, that's that. Here we go. Here's where it adds fire resistance. Now, light. Okay, no, there's nothing that stops you from being from getting lightning damage. So let's add lightning resistance, poison resistance. Same thing. There's no poison resistance yet. There's no fear resistance. I don't think there's any ice resistance. Oh wait, there should be ice resistance. Yeah, okay, so ice resistance makes you frozen for less time. I'm thinking maybe, maybe this should be less even. Like, so, you, if you get frozen normally, you're frozen for a whole two seconds. And that counts for enemies, too. They're frozen for two seconds. But if you have the ice resistance flag, which bosses typically have this, and, and you have it if you have the armor, I think it should be a little less. Let's go down with that. Start playing around with this. This is where it all, this is where the rubber meets the road, where the actual item does its effects and stuff. So fire, fire already works. Fire does, uh, fire does less damage and you also do not have any ambient fire damage. Okay, so let's start with lightning. That's just the animation. Burn mark, lightning flash, sound. The actual entity. The animation of it. All this is purely animational. Is there's no effect going on here.
Oh wow, the second lightning bolt though doesn't do damage with filter lightning. Okay, so lightning and acid are going to take a little bit more testing time. It might take a few hours actually for me to go and make sure all these are like dealing their damage correctly and then doing the resistance correctly, doing the invincibility correctly, doing the weakness correctly. Yeah, this is a project. This might take a whole day actually. Um, but I can start it off like maybe I can at least start with fear like fear does this panic thing And it unpanics you after a duration And the changer What's the thing where you check the resistance is it the entity or the ch it's got to be the entity Yeah, entities, health flags. That's right. Okay, so in panic, we can say duration equals three, but if if the um, has bits e dot health dot flags k health resist oh k health fear resist basically um, then you have like far less time to be panicked let's try this out so uh, there's a place in the um, the first swordless dungeon actually the second fair this swordless dungeon is a pretty good place to go Go there. Is there. This one might be there. Is a constructor a class? No. No, a a constructor is a function that constructs a class, or constructs an object with a class type. Okay, that's not that's not where we want to be. We want to be here. Will you ever stream Windows? Yeah. I've done that before. I don't do it very much because I don't develop on Windows. Very much. And when I am developing on Windows, it typically is like late at night when I'm trying to get a release out. So I just typically don't um, stream on Windows much. Oh, is a struct a class? Yes, basically a struct is a class. A struct is a class with all of its members and variables already defaulted to be public, as opposed to a class that defaults everything to private. Okay, so if I get panicked here, I should be panicked only for one second. Yeah, all right, cool. So that lasted for about once. Let's do this even more dramatically. What is taking so much CPU all of a sudden? Game show. Wait, source kit service? What is source kit? and kernel task. 
Well, source kit service is using 144% of CPU. What the hell was that? Hmm. Let's check this out. I'll check this out later. Yeah, I don't know what's up here. I don't know why I was just doing that all of a sudden. But that was crazy. It's all of a sudden ate up both CPUs. Okay, anyways. So we got um, the normal duration of fear lasts 10 seconds. And then if you have the fear armor, it only lasts for one second. So this should be pretty obvious. I'm going to run it again. This time I'm going to hit him and he should... Once again, do about one second worth of panic. And then I'm going to take off the fear armor and see if that works. So it should be fine. One, one thousand. Yeah, yeah, that was about one second. All right, take off the fear armor. Thanks, Van Zan. You saw that video? Nice. Yeah, I'm, I, I mainly made that video so that I can just refer people to that whenever they ask, when's the release date? I'll just say, here's this video. Watch this video. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4. 1, Thanks, Van Zan. See you, man. 6, 7, 8. Yeah, totally. Okay, this is totally working. And then it just hit me again. Oh, I, I had fear resistance. Okay. Nice. That worked fine. Cool, so this is a little prototype for how this will work. Basically, normal fear panics you for one second, but if you have enlightenment, it only panics you for one second. So that's kind of how the rest of my night's gonna go tonight. I'm gonna work on all these effects of different um, elements. So, uh, and their um, resistances and weaknesses. I haven't even implemented weaknesses yet, but that's gonna be cool. Like, for example, the uh, the fear boss could be weak to ice. And that way, if you have ice weakness, the duration of your being frozen is like twice as long or something like that. So it'll be really cool when Song Warrior is all like that, where all the elements really play into different enemies and also play into your role as a player. Like, uh, for example, and your, your choices as a player and stuff like that, too. And also how you get affected by elemental enemies. So this is going to be a pretty neat thing to add to the game. So. One, two, three, BC Warrior. Yeah. All right, so everybody, thanks a lot for watching. As usual, I appreciate you all. And I will see you all next time. Have a good one.